All right, quick spoiler alert before we even get started with this video. It's been 20 plus long years of sweating out here in the garage. And I'll tell you what, it's pretty darn cold right now. Borderline uncomfortably cold and I love it. So if you own a garage or a house and you're thinking to yourself, man, air conditioning is out of my price point or out of my skill set, you might be wrong. Stick around and watch the video and you'll see. Anybody can do it and it's reasonably priced. Now one quick thing before we get started. If you're an engineer for NASA and you're gonna be thinking, man, that wire is not bent a full 180 degrees and the, you know, the resistance on that, man, if you're thinking that way, this video is not for you. This is for the DIY homeowner trying to get an air conditioner in their garage and trying to get cooled down without all the bull crap. And you know what I mean when I say bull crap. <laughs> All right, so let's get after the video. Let's get started, yeah. All right, welcome back to the channel. For those of you that have been following the channel, you know that occasionally it gets, not just occasionally, routinely, it's an oven in this garage. Now, I've taken set, uh, special measures by insulating all the walls, insulating the garage door, and we've got the temperature down from the 90s into the low 80s. That's not good enough. I want it down in the 70s where I'm nice and cool and comfortable in here in my garage. So. We have our mini split ductless air conditioning system. Now, I've been talking about this for quite some time. It's been off to the side and it's finally time to install it now that all the other pieces are in place. So first things first, when you order a system like this, you wanna know the size of the unit you're gonna get. You wanna know the actual dimensions of the unit so that you can have a spot both indoor and outdoor where you're gonna put these units. All right, so this unit that I have is a fresh off the boat, unbranded version. Now, you'll find this on Amazon with different nameplates on here. Um, for different companies that have branded this different ways. Now, it's a nice looking outdoor unit. It's also got a nice modern looking indoor unit, which is very good looking, very quiet, works well also. This kit also comes with all the plumbing, all the accessories and wiring between the two units, as well as a line hide kit that'll hide all the plumbing outside. What it does not come with is a mounting pad, which I chose to go with the plastic one where it's gonna go on the ground and mount to the pad. You can also mount it directly to concrete. You can put it on a 90 degree bracket and elevate it off of the ground. That choice is up to you. Another thing it does not come with is any of the major electrical work that needs to run to the unit, starting with the breaker, down the wall to, the, to actually power the unit at a disconnect. So you'll get to see all that here in the video. But some people might wonder like, man, you're gonna power that, I mean, you're gonna put that air conditioner in a garage, it's gonna chew up energy. I have 45 panels on my roof, solar, that power my entire house. I'm fully green. Uh, I'm actually below, I make more power than I use. So this is just a, another way that I'm taking advantage of the powerful sun we have here in Hawaii to make my life a little better. I power the car, I power the house, I cool the house, man, it's awesome. Um, I'll cover that in another video, but so that's what we're gonna do today. Let's get it on the wall and let's get it cooled down. All right. So here's where I plan on installing the indoor unit. It's gonna fit perfectly right above the door, blow air into the garage effectively and be out of the way of all my detailing. Now, the next thing we have to do is figure out the exact location, drill our holes and get it hung up there. Let's do it. When figuring out our mounting location, we wanna make sure that we have studs to screw the mounting bracket to and a nice clear path through the drywall with no studs to drill the hole for our control line, line set, as well as our drain. When mounting the mounting bracket, make sure to get adequate screws into the studs to make sure that this is securely mounted to the wall. The hole we drilled through the drywall should be slightly above the lowest portion of the mounting bracket so that it is not exposed after we hang the wall unit. All right, so now it's time to run our copper lines. Now, there's a lot of like mystery about this and my suggestion is when you first get it out of the pack, and now this is a shortened remnant from the job I was doing, but uh, when you first get it out of the pack, you should lay it flat on the ground and unroll it nice and even like this across the, the ground. And oftentimes at the very end, you'll end up with a nice sweeping 90 degree bend already. But if you are gonna bend a, a 90 degree bend, be careful, what you wanna do is you wanna bend it nice and easy, little by little. Now the longer it takes, the better on this one. And you gotta just keep going around the radius and bending it and bending it and bending it. Now, without, with it being underneath, it's kinda hard to tell if you've kinked it. Now, what we do not want, no matter what, 
is we do not want this to get kinked like that. That is, that's bad news right there. Refrigerant is not gonna flow through there. So just keep in mind, real slow bends that go around the long radius. And here's the thing with the radius. All we're trying to do is get it to go in those 90 degree corners on the line hide. I don't need it to, to do a hard 90 degree corner. That, that's terrible. So a nice sweeping radius, as long as it fits inside the line hide and is tucked away, that's all we want. That's where we get the max flow of refrigerant. If you wanna get any more bend than that, based on your scenario, I recommend a high quality pipe bender. Now, I could have done this outside on my situation, but I just felt like all those hard 90s is not a good thing, and it's in the back of my garage, facing a direction that doesn't matter, and it still looks pretty good. So, size it up based on your configuration. If, you, if it's obviously noticeable in the front of your house, and you really need some perfect bends without any risk of kinking it, Get a high quality pipe bender. That's my suggestion. Now, the Mr. Cool unit, on the other hand, has a nice spring around the copper, which really makes bending it easy. But there's no way around the fact that if you just, you know, bend it like out of control in one spot, it's gonna kink and you're done. All right, let's get that pipe on the wall and let's get moving. Okay, now that the mounting bracket is fully installed and we got the pipe bent, it's nice and tight to the wall, it's time to put the unit up there and see what that looks like. All right, now I always bring a screwdriver along to make a little kickstand. Okay, so everything's looking clean. The lengths look right. Let's get them put together. On my fittings, I'll be using a product called Nylog. It's not necessary, but it's a pipe thread sealant, and man, it sure isn't a bad idea. Also, when you're tightening your uh, fittings, make sure you use a torque wrench and the proper torque values. This is super soft copper we're working with and we don't wanna mess up these flare fittings. Next, we'll connect our drain hose. Now we'll run the control wire, leaving just enough to get the job done. We'll route the wire underneath of the machine and through the through hole in the wall. Use the supplied pipe wrapping to clean things up and get it looking organized underneath the machine. A quick note, your drain line should be the lowest line going through the hole and underneath the machine. This is a gravity fed drain, so it's very important. After everything's all tidied up, we'll snap the wall unit into place. Now it's time to connect the control wire. Make special note of the arrangement of your wires. I chose one red, two white, three black and green to ground. The outdoor unit is gonna to have to match this same exact configuration. For now, the indoor unit is completely installed. It's time to go outside and get that outdoor unit all set up. All right, let's do it. So here's my outdoor site location. There's the breaker box straight down the wall and the unit's gonna be right there on the end. I'll start by grading the area with some gravel, putting down the mounting pad, leveling the mounting pad, now grading the gravel around the area so that no water collects around the machine. So for my particular installation, the line set comes out of the wall around this block pillar that supports the garage. I use tie wire to temporarily hold it up because it's heavy and I don't want it bending. And then run it down to right to the outdoor unit. I like to wrap the remainder of the line set with the provided pipe wrapping to keep it clean and to reduce the exposure to the elements. Let's get this buttoned up. So after the drain line went through the wall, I ran it down the wall with PVC, took a 90 degree bend, and run it off the side of the cement slab into an area where water can drain. And here's what the line hide looks like completed. It came in white, of course I painted it brown to match. I do have an irregular configuration around this corner, but I did not want to overbend the pipes, so I'm happy with it. Now we'll place the outdoor unit onto the mounting pad and do a general dry fit to make sure that our control wire is going to match up nice and that our piping is bent reasonable and now it's time to hook those pipes up using our nylock make sure it goes on nice and easy hand tight be sure to use a torque wrench and achieve that specified torque value we don't want to over tighten it and ruin the flare fitting and we don't want to under tighten it and have refrigerant leak either way it's bad news on a mr cool unit this is where you would be finished with the plumbing but on a non-Mr. Cool unit, this is where you would begin your vacuum evacuation. 
I'll talk about that more later. Once the plumbing is complete, we'll use a hex key to open up both valves and allow the refrigerant to slowly enter the system. Now it's time to move on to the electrical. We need to run conduit from our breaker box down to our air conditioner disconnect. I'll be using 10 gauge wire for my installation, so I have 10 gauge through the conduit and a 10 gauge appliance whip down to the unit. Here we have line one, line two, and a ground, which is our 220 volt power supply from our breaker box. We also have one, two, and three, and a ground, which is our control wire from our indoor unit. If you remember back, we did red one, white two, black three, and green ground, just like on the indoor unit. Now it's time to connect the electrical inside the air conditioner disconnect. This is where we start to get into if you don't know what you're doing, hire a professional. For this 18,000 BTU unit, we're using a 220 20 volt breaker. Now that we have the breaker in, all labeled nicely, the breaker box put back together, the conduit's in, it's all painted, it looks great. The disconnect is all situated, now it's time to put the cover back on and get everything done inside there. We're almost ready to turn this on. That looks pretty clean, I gotta say. So we'll mount the cover back on. Also, we'll put the cover for the line set on. Double check all your work. Everything should be done at this point. There should be no loose ends or nothing looking out of the ordinary. And here we go again, man. I'm looking at the wall. It looks like crap. So I gotta paint this damn thing. <laughs> Now that that's looking all better, let's fire it up. So now that the wall mounted indoor head unit is installed and everything's all set up, there's nothing left to do but to turn this thing on and get this garage cooled down. So let's go ahead and turn it on. All right, there it is. Already set at 70. Somebody knows I wanted it cold in here. <laughs> all right, so the cold air is already pouring out of it. I can tell you right now, it's gonna cool this garage down really easy. That's a big blast of cold air and it's really quiet too, which is, which is helpful. I mean, it's always pretty noisy in here anyway when I'm working, but you know, when I'm filming, it's super important to not have like a loud fan, you know, honking in the background. All right, so the unit is on and running and I gotta say it's whisper quiet out here too. I mean, the microphone's literally six inches from the unit and I can barely hear it in my own ear. So we'll see what it sounds like on camera, but more than four or five feet away, you can just hear a low, low fan rumble. So that's good. What? Of course I'm putting bead maker on it. <laughs> Why wouldn't I? All right, so that outdoor unit is whisper quiet. I mean, I've had it running now for about a half an hour. I can tell you what, man, even here in the garage, I can hear my, my freezer over top of the, the wall unit. So man, it's blowing out amazingly cold air and no sound whatsoever, pretty much. I mean, there's a little, don't get me wrong, but it, it's reasonable, it's quiet. So let's talk about the install, man. It went really good. I mean, I had really no hangups. You know, each install is gonna be different. You're gonna have a different way you route the pipes. And one thing I could say, man, just take your time with the pipe bending. Think about all your bends in advance. Uh, don't just start bending and yanking on the pipe. You can't get, you're in big trouble, man. And then you gotta get new line set or something like that. So that, that's the time that's gonna take some time and some patience. So. Um, I wanted to talk about the two different types of units that you can get. Now I've brought it up already, but Mr. Cool version, that's the one I recommend for 99% of you guys. It's going to be just put the line set, you know, do the full install exactly the way you watch me do it, hook the line set up and pretty much you're done. It has pre-charged lines, which means that they do not need to be evacuated. They don't need anything of the sort, no special air conditioning tools. Now, if you go the other route with the, with the unit um, that, that requires you know, a line set to be cut, flare fittings to be put on, that whole bit. Now, I didn't cover that in my video because I don't want this to be, you know, an instructional video of how to not use a professional when you really should be. So, <laughs> even though these are DIY units, the other type of unit, the non-Mr. Cool unit, let's call it, requires um, 
basically using professional tools. Now, what, what are the pros of that? The pros are that I can get, a, you know, I can put my outdoor unit wherever I want, I can put the indoor unit wherever I want, and I'll run the line set, and when I get to the unit, I cut it, flare fit it, and put it together, and there's no excess pipe. Now, with a pre-charged line set like the Mr. Cool, you're gonna end up having to, uh, let's say it's 15 feet away and you get the 22 foot line set, then you're gonna have to coil up the difference behind the unit. Is that a big deal? Man, maybe it doesn't look quite as clean and professional as an install, but you can do it yourself without any skills or any tools. And um, in most cases, it coils up right behind the unit. You don't see it anyway, so who cares? It works great, man. A lot of people are doing it. That's the one I recommend. But if you want to tackle something a little bit more difficult and have a little bit more custom, clean install, then you go with the other unit. Which again, when I say the other unit, there's five or six different brands. They all do the same exact thing, the same exact, just about everything. So um, I'll put links in the description for all these things so you don't have to sort it out. But I didn't show it on my video, but I did do a full evacuation. After I got the line set hooked up, I put the pump on it. I, draw, I drew it down to under 500 microns. You know, I took a couple different uh, vacuum pools to get it to stay down there, and it stayed at uh, under 500 microns for 12, 13 hours. So I was confident that all the water was out, all the moisture was out, any contaminants were removed, and that there was no leaks. And that's what we're looking for with this type of system. Now, again, you're gonna need the gauges, I, I have a flaring tool, and the nylog. I brought it up during the video, but the nylog is some neat stuff, man. It works well. The thread sealant. Um, also, you got the pipe bender, and man, the torque, the torque wrench. I talked about this in the video, but I want to show you. Man, it, it's specifically for air conditioning, and use a torque wrench. This, co this copper is super soft. You go yanking on it, you pinch that flare fitting, and it's all over, man. It's going to leak. So with the proper torque setting and the proper um, you know, techniques, it's going to go together great, and it's going to last many years with no problem. Okay, so let's talk about the, the, the benefits of these units. One, they're crazy efficient, man. You have an outdoor unit, an indoor unit, no duct work where you're escaping. I mean, you could have you know, 65 degree air blowing out of the, the air handler in your house, but by the time it runs through all the duct work and ends up in the garage or somewhere else, man, it's, it's five, 10 degrees hotter, it's, it's wasted, it's whizzing out the side. This is just a straightforward deal. Outdoor, indoor unit blowing cold air straight in. So super crazy efficient. Also, man, I saw documentation that says that they'll, it'll cool effectively up to 115 degrees outdoor temperature. Not only that, but it heats all the way down to negative 22 degrees Fahrenheit. Man, that's huge. So this is not only an air conditioning unit in the summer, but man, it's a heater in the winter and it does a, both job, it does a good job on both. Now, do I need a heater in Hawaii? Absolutely not. But if I was somewhere cold, this would be my unit, man. It works awesome. If you guys have any questions at all, leave them down in the comments down below. I love answering the questions. And if you're that guy from NASA just looking for something to do for fun, you know what? I'll even try to answer your question. <laughs> That's a big order. <laughs> all right. So also, if you haven't subscribed, man, that button's right there, man. And we sure enjoy all the subscribing that's been going on. The channel's growing great. I'm looking forward to making more content. And all the likes, man, throw a like down there. Show you support the channel. Comments, likes. I know everybody hears that on all these videos. But what I can tell you for sure is when people comment, like, and subscribe, man, the channel gets ranked up better and people get to watch the videos, man and that, that encourages me to do more cool content. So if you could take the time to do that, that'd be awesome. Otherwise, I try to do this on all my videos on things that I really like a lot. I don't, I don't do this lightly, but I'm gonna tell you, man, that air conditioner is super good, man. It's ice cold in here, and I'm looking forward to pulling the car back in and getting back to work. All right, we'll see you on the next one, yeah.